Hey everybody, I'm Mike Iaconelli. Welcome to a brand new In the Shop. But today, I'm not in the shop, I'm out in the boat. And I wanna show you how I organize this boat, how I pack stuff, and how I prepare for a brand new season of professional bass tournament fishing. You know, organization, um, having stuff in a place where you can get to it really quick, helps me save time. And time on the water is so critical. So um, packing this boat correctly, organizing it correctly, it's really, really key to what I do. I wanna start in the back of the boat and give you my general theory on the items to put in the back. You know, um, as far as getting on pad, uh, getting on pad in shallow water, getting the boat on plane, riding in big rough water, or just general boat performance, you always wanna put the heaviest stuff in the back, okay? You always wanna put your heaviest tackle and equipment in the back. So I've got two hatches in the back, one behind the driver's seat, one behind the passenger seat. The one behind the driver's seat, I am gonna put all my terminal tackle. And terminal tackle, uh, things like weights, jig heads, uh, hooks, um, swim bait heads, like all these really heavy things, worm weights, drop shot weights, Carolina rig weights, they're tungsten, they're lead, they weigh a lot. So I want all that in the back of the boat. So you're gonna notice all these boxes back here, they're man, they're super heavy. Um, the other thing I do is I label everything and I've got everything color coded. So all of my terminal tackle gets orange labels on it and I clearly write real big letters what's in there. So this box is worm weights, pop it open. You notice I've got all my weights. Every tray that's full in there, these super heavy tungsten weights, it's all gonna stay organized it's gonna stay put. And again, all the heavy stuff in the back. Terminal tackle gets orange. Now behind the passenger seat, I've got heavy stuff, but it's not necessarily tackle. It's boating equipment. And you know, I always like to be prepared with tools. So that's things like a spare prop, a prop wrench, a socket set, a screwdriver, all those heavy tool items that I need. If an emergency happens on the boat, I have to change a prop, something comes loose, I've got all those heavy tools right behind the passenger seat. Keep going up front, and uh, this, is, this is a critical workstation for me. And I wanna show you the way that I split up my tackle. And the first one is this big center hatch. And the big center hatch, I reserve for all my soft plastics. So anything that's a soft plastic item, I put uh, up front in this box. And you know, the same thing, I color code that stuff as well. So besides this hook box, you're gonna see all these boxes. And I do have some loose bags laying at the top. But for the most part, you're gonna see these boxes labeled and color coded. And for my soft plastics, I'm gonna use purple. And if you look in this one, I've got all my jig trailers. So I've got Berkeley Chunks, I've got other brands. Um, and I carry a limited supply in the boat so I don't overweigh it. Um, you know, instead of carrying 80 packs of these, I carry like two packs, uh, two different colors. I keep it pretty simple and I've got everything right where I can get to it in a flambeau box, once again, labeled all soft plastics in purple. Um, the only other thing I'm gonna keep up here, I'll show you this real quick, is I keep my leader bag up here, and this is just a little Berkeley bag, and when I unzip that, you're gonna see small filler spools from six all the way to 20 pound fluorocarbon. So if I'm using the braid or fluoro leader, I have all my leader material right in the front, okay? So soft plastics up front, trying to stay pretty limited to what I carry, cut that weight down a little bit on my soft plastics. 
The next one in front of that, if you look, this is a pretty nice little storage area as well. By the way, this is a Bass Cat Cougar FTD. And I love this bass boat because of the vast amount of storage. It's one of the reasons I love it. But if you look at this one, and these are the lightest baits that I have in the boat. So this is the front toward the nose. It's the lightest baits I own. And these are my hard lures. These are crank baits, top waters, jerk baits, lipless, wake baits, any of my hard baits. And I keep these all up front and I use a green label for all my hard baits. So I've got weighted shad wraps, DT4s, DT6s, lipless baits. And in each box, once again, just like the soft plastics, I keep a smaller supply of each color. You know, the magic number for me in hard baits is I like to have three or four of each color. And you're gonna see that in this box of DT4s. Um, I don't carry a million colors. I carry the basic colors, but I have, you, you, look, you can count them. I have three to six in each color. So my crawfish colors, there's mule. My uh, perch and bluegill colors, there's old school. There's Rasta. My shad colors, there's uh, disco shad. There's blueback herring, there's penguin. And of course, some of my bright ones, my shock colors. Uh, like girlfriend and like demon. And I don't need 30 of each bait, but if I have three to four to five to six, I feel safe that in the course of a day's fishing, I'm not gonna run out. So all my hard baits at the nose of the boat, flambeau boxes labeled with a green label and each one identifying what's in the box. Okay, all right, we're almost getting to the end here. Now we've got two rod lockers on either side. Well, I don't carry that many rods. I carry about 30 rods. I'm gonna do the rods last. They go over here on the left side of the boat. On the right side of the boat, on the starboard side, it's more storage. And this is for the other stuff. And when I say other stuff, this is for things like spinner baits. And I carry a lot of my spinner baits in Ziplocs. Once again, if you look, here's a bunch of Mullix uh, Vetinator spinner baits and some really uh, cool shock colors for mu muddy water. There's Mud Vein, uh, another Mud Vein bait, really cool style bait. And I'll carry, just like crankbaits, I'll carry three to four to five spinner baits of each size and each color. That's all I need in the course of a day, so I don't overload it. So spinner baits, I've got buzz baits. Um, some of my lighter jigs, here's my micro jigs. I've got my swim baits in here like power swimmers. So this is more of a little bit of a miscellaneous box. And again, not carrying too much of one thing. But if you look, once again, I wanna show you this. Everything is color coded. So for jigs in my flambeau box, look, blue labels. There's my mop jigs. There's my missile flipping jigs. So everything's color coded. Um, and a lot of stuff in this is sort of like a miscellaneous loose box. Last but not least, I carry 25 to 30 rods when I practice. And I get a lot of questions about, why do you need that many rods? Why do you have that many rods? And the reason is in practice, I want to have different baits on each rod. So if I'm out there going down the bank and I, I think about something, if I have to stop digging a hatch, find something, retie, it stops that fishing the moment process. But if I think about something, if I say, you know what? This bank looks like a spinnerbait bank. I pull that rod and I've got it ready. I've got a spinnerbait ready or a crankbait, or a lipless, or a soft plastic, or a chicken rig. If I think it, I have it tied on. So that's the reason for so many rods. Um, what I basically do is, the rods that I don't think I'm gonna use right away, I keep in a rod sleeve, and I keep those at the bottom of the rod locker. At the top of the rod locker, I have my rod separators, 
and all the rods that I think I'm going to use during the course of a day, I have ready with no sleeve on it, right? Here's a, grab one for you, here's a DT6. I'm ready to fish this one, no sleeve. And I can fit about 16 rods in the top. All the rest of them are in rod sleeves toward the bottom. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of the boat. And, you know, let me tell you that you don't need to carry this much stuff, but label your stuff, stay organized, create a system that works for you, and you're going to save time on the water. The other thing, remember, the heaviest stuff put toward the back of the boat. The more you get to the front of the boat, you want your lighter stuff in the very nose of that boat. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's in the shop out here in the boat. And uh, I hope you have good luck organizing your boat as well. If you enjoyed this one, do me a favor. Stop for a second. If you're not already subscribed, smash that subscribe button down there. If you're already a subscriber, you know a buddy, an uncle, a cousin, your dad, they're not subscribed yet? Let them know a lot of great fishing information coming from Ike's in the shop. Good luck, good fishing, and I want you to organize your boat to the best you can. See you later.